So some concepts of heart disease that we'd like to review now that you may or may not be familiar with. The first sign of heart disease could be too late. And again, I know that <laughs> firefighters know this more than anyone else. 50% of men and 60% of women who died suddenly did not know that they had heart disease, nor did they have any previous symptoms of the disease. This actually, this photo was taken from the Canadian Journal of Firefighters, where as you can tell, they are resuscitating one of their own. So why is this? Why can somebody suddenly drop dead from heart disease with no previous symptoms? And I'll try to illustrate that with this slide, which is representing an artery with the blood flowing down the middle from the left to the right at different ages. So way on the left, you might be young, like 20 years of age, and way to the right, you might be elderly, like 90 years of age. And we know that this disease process starts early in life, in your 20s and 30s. Something irritates the lining of the artery wall, fat infiltrates, calcium is deposited, and very slowly this process proceeds. And we used to think that you had to go all the way to the right, where you see that very small lumen, and then you got your angina, and you got a treadmill test, and you were diagnosed with heart disease. But in the past 20 years, what we've discovered in cardiology is that most people have heart attacks who only have about a 50% blockage. And there's plenty of room for blood to get past so you don't have angina, but something irritates it, such as inflammation. And the fatty material that's in the vessel wall erupts a little bit like a volcano. And when it spills into the bloodstream, a blood clot forms very rapidly and bong, you have a total occlusion, person goes down with a heart attack and they may or may not survive. So this explains why 50% of people find out they have heart disease for the very first time when they suddenly drop dead. This concept is also important to appreciate in terms of testing we do to detect disease, one of which is a regular stress test that you have received probably annually in many of your exams. Every stress test in the world will be absolutely normal when you have a 50% blockage you need to get to about 75% block before you get what's called hemodynamically significant and you develop changes on your EKG that then tell you you have coronary disease. So the real way to use a stress test is to determine if you have symptoms, is it because of a partially blocked artery? But if your stress test is normal, it does not mean you do not have heart disease. It means you do not have severe heart disease. So what we're trying to also illustrate here is that by these firefighter specific heart health tests that we're gonna be discussing in a minute, we can pick up disease at these early stages here. And we don't wanna wait until you get down here to tell you that you have heart disease. So all of you are familiar with cholesterol tests and routine cholesterol testing. And while we think that that is important to detect and treat, I want you to know that high blood cholesterol does not always identify those that have heart disease. In fact, 75% of people that have heart disease actually have a normal LDL cholesterol. So most patients don't actually have a classic cholesterol disorder. And we don't know this, Robert and I don't know this just from firefighting, we know this from our years in preventive cardiology. Most risk of heart disease are associated with advanced and non-traditional risk factors. So to drive that point home, I made this slide from a, a large study at the American Heart Association called Get With the Guidelines. It was done in 136,000 individuals coming into the hospital with a documented heart attack. So all these people are known to have a heart attack and they measured the blood cholesterol and in this case the LDL cholesterol. And at the bottom on the x-axis, those are LDL cholesterol ranges. And just look at 100 for a second and look at the red bar and go all the way to the top. That's about 10% of everybody had an LDL cholesterol of 100. And then to the left of that is 90 and that's about 11%. So if you add up the height of each of the bars, it comes out to be 100%. So look to the right of the yellow box and that's individuals with LDL cholesterols over 130, which would be considered high. And therefore, that's a risk for them, and that's their problem, and cholesterol lowering should be aggressively achieved in those individuals. However, recently, it was felt that LDLs under 130 were normal, and if that's the case, 75% of patients who have heart disease 
coming into the hospital with a heart attack have, quote, normal LDL cholesterol. In fact, almost 25% have an LDL under 70, which is considered really good. So most people with heart disease do not have a classic hypercholesterolemia condition. Something else must be causing the disease. So we know what some of those other risk factors are that are causing disease. So this is just a glimpse of what we're going to be offering for the cardiovascular disease risk markers. So Robert was talking about LDL being quote normal, but what you don't know is what the type of LDL or the size or the density and most dangerous of the LDLs is an inherited trait called small dense LDL. We're gonna be measuring that. Another concept that is less well understood, and I hope you will learn more today, is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, catching it early, is when lifestyle, diet, nutrition come into play, and you can actually reverse that signal of someone developing type 2 diabetes. Lipoprotein A, or referred to as LP little a, is also an important marker that now the national guidelines have said everyone should be screened for at least once. It's inherited, it's causal of cardiovascular disease, and most importantly, it causes an increased risk of blood clots. We're gonna talk about that further. Another marker is LPPLA2. This is also known as a plaque activity test. This is an inflammatory marker, but it's very specific to that inflammation. If you think back to the drawing that we just showed you of the artery, when inflammation becomes inflammation starts inside that arterial wall due to plaque being built up because plaque's not supposed to be there. So that's an important marker. If it's elevated, we can guide you on what some of your considerations would be. Another important marker in firefighters is NT pro BNP. This is a marker of heart muscle stress and damage. It's an enzyme that's actually released from those muscle cells. This can happen over time, slowly, has no symptoms, but can also help us detect who needs to manage hypertension or who's already suffered a heart attack that they were unaware of. 